Hello, everybody. Today, bo -bo -bo -bom, we are looking at the Arturia Keylab 88 Mark II. Um, a number of you have been remarking um, about the fact that I've uh, been using this keyboard recently. Uh, I still have the Native Instruments S88 um, Mark II, uh, which is in the shed, and I have this one in the main studio. So during this video, I'm going to be largely, I'm going to be looking at this. I'm going to tell you what you need to know if you're considering buying a controller keyboard, and this is on your shortlist. Um, and then I will be at the end comparing the Native Instruments one and this one. And what did I think? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to inject a little bit of peril, a little bit of suspense. So you'll have to wait till the end. Well, it's not long to wait and it's going to be interesting. And if this is the kind of thing which floats your boat, um, why don't you save an awful lot of time and push the subscribe button now rather than waiting till later and you might forget. Yeah, because we do all this kind of stuff on this channel all the time. Now, behold, the S88, I mean, the <laughs> Arteria Kiva Lab. Um, it's a very, very capable keyboard. And as you can see, it has an absolute wealth of uh, it, sliders. It's got drum pads. It's got knobs. It's got everything you could possibly want. And as a big fan of knobs and sliders and uh, controls and things like that, this is a big plus. Right. Let's start by talking about what it actually feels like to play. Because... What? Okay, that's not quite what I was expecting there. It's really, really, it feels like class. It's just, it feels solid, it feels pianistic, it feels, uh, it's probably a little bit heavier than the um, S88, um, but it's really well made. I mean, look at these, um, uh, the, you know, these little, uh, the pitch bend and the mod wheel, you know, pure metal, really, really classy. Um, it's, it's a very, very well-made keyboard. Um, I've had no problems with either the Native Instruments or this one, so I can't talk about reliability, but this just feels completely solid. Now, some people, I think, would find the, um, the actual touch heavier than the S88. It's definitely heavier than the S88. Um, if that... Do you like it or not? The only way of telling is by going to a music store and putting your hands on it, and within two minutes you'll know whether this is a keyboard you're going to live with, because you could be living with this for quite a long time. Um, I really like it. I move back and forward between the S88 and this all the time, and I enjoy them both. As I'm slightly heavy-handed, actually, this keyboard suits me really down to the ground, but it's a, you know, I get lots of control out of this. I get lots of... I get all the subtlety I want. <laughs> subtlety! Are we talking about the same guy? Subtlety, sorry. No, I'm not really very subtle, am I? Okay. So, that is, you know, the feel, the touch, and all the rest of it is something which you're going to have to work out because I can just say, oh, it feels like going for a walk in, a, in the long grass in the early spring. The way your fingers move it means nothing. The moment you put your hand on it, you'll get the gist of whether you like it or not, and that's pretty much as simple as it's going to get. So, let's dig into... This bit. There's a lot going on up here, as you can tell, and a lot of good stuff going on. Um, the it's got three main um, down here. You've got three different modes of operation: analog lab, which um, sets all the controls up to work with um, Arturia's analog lab software. Then it's got door, so you can conf configure it to um, with all the controllers to, um, so you've got the transport controls and things like that, which control Logic, Cubase, Reaper, Ableton, whatever else. Then you've got User, which allows you to completely customise all these knobs and sliders and keypads so that it can do whatever you want it to do. Configure it to, please write some inspiring music for me. No, maybe not. Anyway. So let's look at analog lag first of all, because in some respects, when you use this uh, with Arturia's own built-in software, what you're sort of getting is it, it's getting perilously close to the experience you get with a, um, a hardware synthesizer. Because each of these knobs, if you look across the bottom there, 
Uh, so here we have a pad. Well, no, it's a lead from the ARP 2600. Um, brightness, filter attack, timbre, time movement, chorus. So you get lots of control and lots of nice control um, faffing about with um, um, little knobs and. Um, okay, so here we go. Here's another one. Again, you get slight, you know, you get all these controls across the bottom. If you go into, if you don't use Analog, Analog Lab is presets you can tweak. And remember, all the Arteria stuff, they're not samples of um, of these vintage instruments. They're recreations, so you can really get in and tweak everything, absolutely everything. Um, so, for example, if we look at uh, the Jupiter Eight, which is one which I use all the time. Here it is. I tell you what. Let's close out a little bit. It also will respond to... So here we go. So what we got going on here? Let's go for a... Uh, let's go for another lead. Chip state. Oh my lord, no. Okay, I don't know. Why am I... Right, so when I'm playing with something like this, what happens when I start faffing about with these... Well, what actually happens when I start faffing about with these, if you watch the envelope, the, the, the sliders on the keyboard, the faders, control the, okay, envelope, decay, sustain, release, and then, um, this is the worst, this is literally, probably, the, that's better. Right, so let's, now you'll start seeing how... Can you see that? You can see the way it's, uh, as I, there we go, that's better. So it's just like playing with a, um, you know, this. Rotating knobs here, cut off resonance. So it is just like. Thank you, Harold. Checks in the post. Okay. Sorry, what am I talking about? Okay, so look, um, this is so that's you've got a ton of control. The exciting bit, the bit I like best, because look, am I always going to be working with Arturo synthesizers or am I going to be working in tons of other instruments? Answer, of course, tons of other instruments. Um, so what happens when, I don't know, we get up, uh, uh, what should we go for? Contact 7. And let's load up, you know, Okay, so you're not a synthy person. You want to, to play with Spitfire. You want some ensemble strings. So what can you do with this? What you can do with this now uh, is we now go into user mode. It is dead easy to set up these keys to do absolutely anything you want. So if we open the software MIDI control center, Okay, so here are the sliders. I've got this one set to CC7, this one CC11, this one CC2. What shall I set this one to? I have no idea. I'm going to call this slider, I'm going to call Frank, and I'm going to set it to something completely bonkers because I really don't mind what it's going to be. Breath controller, foot controller, um, channel volume we've got. Oh, I don't know. Pan, go on then, let's go pan. Right, so now we save it. Okay. And now we drag it into user one and data transfer in progress. And now when we go into our instrument and when we look back at the keyboard, um, we go, we, load, we re reload it and then I move this one and I've got channel 10. There we go, look. So it's CC10. It's that easy. It is that easy. Now, um, for, those, for people like me who use quite a lot of Spitfire stuff, what I've done down here is I've programmed the drum pads to start 
at c minus 2. Those of you who are familiar with the, uh, with the Spitfire world will know that their key switches are somewhere to the west of Hawaii. They're about 10,500 miles in that direction. So unless you've got arms which are 10,500 miles long or another keyboard, it can be a bit of a pain. But all I've done is I've programmed them so that, let's make sure this works, boom. Why is it not working? Have I overwritten these things? Oh, that's very annoying. Okay, right. That's annoying. Because what I'd done is, here we go. Oh, right, okay. I'd, uh, there you go, that's all you do. You load up that one's uh, C minus two. So this one is going to be C sharp minus two. This one is going to be D minus two. Okay, so now we're going to save it. We're going to copy it across to user. Data transfer in progress. And now with any luck, those keys will, there we go, console, do you know, etc, uh, etc. Et so um, it's a complete no brainer. Right. And there we go. Turn up the volume because we've got CC7 and CC11. Shebang. OK, so you can really turn this into whatever you want it to be. Well, not anything. It can't be a sort of DeLorean. I mean, but it's um, it's got sort of it's just it's just not. And, and look, there's places to put over the side here. You've got places to put your mouse and all that kind of thing. Right. At the beginning of this video, I promised you I'd tell you what I thought about the difference between the S88 and the Keylab 88. Um, the major difference for most people will be what pieces, you know, what software you use it with most. Do you need loads of faders? Do you use Atoria stuff? Then in which case this is a no-brainer. Um, if you are locked into the native instruments complete world, then obviously that's completely integrated into that. And you, if you're the kind of person who uses uh, complete control plugins, um, instruments so that you can swap around stuff, then obviously the native instrument stuff is a no-brainer. Um, this keyboard has more faders and pads uh, than the S88, um, and the it also has a, uh, a slightly weightier action. The S88 is a little, I think, not much less expensive, but a bit less expensive. And uh, but it's all you know, it, it's quite a lot of money. This is what a thousand euros, and I think the F88 is uh, quickly looking at uh, how much is an S88? Uh, it's currently oh, discounted to 800 pounds, so it's normally 979. Okay, so look, it is to all intents and purposes, they're more or less the same price. Um, so that's 979 down to 799, and this one is currently 999 euros. Okay, fair dues. Um, as I say, I use both of them. I love both of them. They're both incredibly well built, and I just find it easy and intuitive to uh, to use. I don't find myself uh, wanting for anything. I really like the fader, the programmable faders on this. That um, makes my morning. Um, I like being able to use uh, the faders to control synthesizers because I do miss twiddling knobs uh, with the old style stuff. Um, but equally, I really, really enjoy the S88 and I've been using it for... Oh, when did I do that review? The review which is up there being linked to right now by you. Well done, you. Um, <clears throat> a while ago. Um, they're both solid professional choices so but really you need to go and put your hands on them um, to tell which of the two uh, in terms of action is going to sue you um, and then it's down to integration with the software and how much you like faders and things like that so look that's all i have for you for today um, but we're going to be back very soon with more stuff um, if you've enjoyed this and you find this useful um, then why don't you Click the, old, click the old subscribe button and uh, join our happy little band. Um, Think Space Education 
is a, a jaunty little outfit which teaches people all about all kinds of things um, to do with music. Music technology, songwriting, music production, film scoring, um, sampled orchestration. Our latest little adventure is um, how to write music for trailers. And it's a really cool course with loads of interactivity and projects and a whole community on Discord and everything. So I'm going to be back soon, but I'm going to leave you with this trailer. <laughs> bye bye. Even a single hit, you've built it out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven layers. <laughs> it's it's over the top. It's a bit silly, um, but it got the sound I wanted. It's all about layering. It has to fill the whole frequency because in cinema, you know, you've got the big speakers. Is it brass or is it in effect? Yeah, you know, because this is very close to a bra. I remember doing some hits and the sound source was me hitting my sofa with a flip-flop. That was the, the original sound source. Yeah, I think you, you also need to put your own spin on it. It will just set you apart from everyone else who was just reaching for the same old libraries that we can all afford and we can all get these days. You always have to go the extra mile, particularly in trailers. You really have to focus in on every detail. The production levels have got to be really, really high. I wanted to know a little bit more about you, actually. And choose from one of these four. A. OK, you've chosen to take a walk on the wild side. You will learn a lot more about music technology and a lot more about your door just by doing the course. Ah, it works over the drone, which acts as a pedal, so harmonically it fits. There's enough movement to make it interesting. Not sure I would have chosen A. You're going to be able to do that by the time you get to the end of this course. Then make your choice, make your choice, and make your choice now.